Game 4 coming at you as Dignitas and Expert continue to face off. Dignitas really seeming to find their footing here as they've won the last two matches and continue to look a little bit better every single game. Yesterday we heard Bad Benny say we can make this a 3-0. Dignitas was listening and they just said no. No, it's not happening, man. We're Western Class champions and we want to go to midseason brawl. Dignitas continues to be on fire. Yeah, Dignitas was not deterred at all. A little uh, little surprising when they dropped game one. Didn't seem to affect them the slightest. They continued to just dominate the majority of the game in the next two. And uh, I think unless Expert changes up their drafting here for a much stronger early game composition, we're going to see more of the same. Yeah, we'd like to see some more aggression from them. We know they're capable of it. We've seen it in the past with their Medivh Diablo engages, Medivh Anubarak. Heck, maybe it's time to just bring back the Medivh. It's been a while since we've seen that hero in rotation for them. Uh, we've seen a lot of bans against them in the past, too, since that was just one of the combos that they really like to play quite a bit. But yeah, this is the moment where Expert has to show up. Yep. It's the last chance to tie the series again and really go into a fifth map, so they have to make this one count. And as the map, we have the choice on the side of Team Expert now, and it is Battlefield of Eternity. They have elected to go to BOE, and this might be repetitive, but the last time we saw them on BOE, they didn't pull off the one we saw before it, which was the Triple Support Life. Which, by the way, Cawthon, what do you think of the Triple Support Life from Expert? I'm sure it tilted a lot of hero leaguers. <laughs> <laughs> already have two supports in all their games. Now they're gonna have three and f three and four after that one. If, ah. if you missed it, you should check out the VOD. They ran an Arthas and a Sonia with three supports, Lily being one of the mainstays, and it was a pretty impressive showing. And to just highlight that before you guys get too excited and uh, Trick is ruining the Hero League experience <laughs> for thousands of people again, that was specifically on Battlefield of Eternity. Please don't forget that. That is a two-lane map. It plays very different than most other maps. Don't try that at home, kids. Don't forget that, unless you like fun. And Caldor doesn't like fun. So it's all Can good in the hood. Kick you? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, we're going to BOE here, and this is going to be the pickup for Expert. They are moving into this battleground, and this is a battleground that can be built out for certain drafts. An expert has shown that in the past, but single t single target DPS has always been strong. Let's not forget the most important thing here: they chose the battleground over the first pick. Oh yes, yes. I, I like that. That means they have something planned for. <laughs> I mean, when you, when <laughs> you give up, pot. <laughs> yeah, when you give up first pick, that means you have some sort of pocket strategy. And in this case, their usual style has not been working against Dignitas. Dignitas just so good at punishing the passive play that them trying a specific pocket strategy here is just what they need to turn this around. Would we surprise to see support bans here? No. Because if that is, if this is really your pocket strategy, hey boys, I'm going triple support again, then it's very badly hidden since they've uh, shown it once. Granted, the last time they showed it, the match hat didn't have the significance of yeah. this. So there's always a question, are they trying to bait them a little bit with that? Do they have something completely different prepared? And it seems as if Dignitas is wondering and pondering the same question since they buy their time here, but it's the Anubarak that's first of all banned out. Starting out with the Anub band, he is 3-0 and in today's game so far. So Dignitas, not wanting to first pick it themselves, probably want to remove that option from Expert as he has been dominant so far in the series. Dignitas in the past has moved straight into the gray main on this battleground as often as they can, so they're hoping that to be available. Team Expert needs to consider going with possibly that ban if available. Now, if you do want to ban out the triple support strategy, I feel like Lili really allowed for that to be a strategy that can be pulled off. The blind just being impactful and allowing for those tanks to get in and apply a little bit more damage on their opponents. So if they had to ban it out, I think that would be the way to go for it. You just want to see a Lili ban. <laughs> I, just, I just like having the, you know, the numbers go up yeah. for Lili bans, you know? I would go for the Oriel in that setup. But I, I grant you they're really bad. Resurrect doesn't do anything. It's all about the blinds and uh, the water dragon. It's a dragon, man. Okay, okay. <laughs> I can't talk to this guy. So, <laughs> Cotton, what do you think about an Oriel ban? I like dragons, man. <laughs> I hate both of you. This guy, yes. Can we get a fist pump? Let's go ahead and bring it in here. Mm, dragon life. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Kaldor, I just you have feel to accept him now. into your heart. It's I, good. Do you want me to leave? Do you, do you two want a room? I mean, you could you cast, want to right? Move in closer, you, you're getting better. Like, every day, you're yeah. starting to dominate him. You're the third guy. You've got a meme going. Let's make you a caster. Let's just go. Yeah, you play ranged, right? I'm getting replaced <laughs> while I'm sitting here. <laughs> You can, go play, you can go play Lili for Tempo Storm. I'll cast about dragons. You want me mm. to play North America? Okay. That'd be kind of fun experiment, oh. actually. After all that talk, you should be able to dominate, right? Yeah, hey, the, <laughs> U, the, U, 
the EU Coffin life. Coffin is bringing out the sass today. <laughs> Can he come back tomorrow? Oh, I'm excited for it. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to the game here. Arthas has been banned out. Arthas, obviously, one of the stronger warriors on this battleground in particular. He can set up a foundation, he can troll, but you can also go in for the engage. It's great to get rid of him. Now, Dignitas is taking some time on their pick. What could they be thinking about? They probably think about what Expert has planned here, since they know that usually when Expert forces the ban on the map, that, yeah, JPL. Wow. Last time, Fnatic banned out the Muradin. And uh, I feel this is them just saying, how can we be as flexible as possible to no matter what our opponent does? And they go for comfort picks. And I, I like the decision here to just start with really heroes that are very comfortable with. We've seen tanks banned out. So great choice by Dignitas. Yeah, if Dignitas is looking to pick up the Grey Mane, like you said, they would probably prioritize. One advantage this does give them is that when they 2-3 the Grey Mane, if it's still available, they can then ban the Lili if it's not picked up, and that's something they're afraid of Expert doing. Expert, we'll see if they move into the Greymane themselves, because Nick can pull off his own Greymane. He's not too shy with playing off that hero as well. So Antares then gets on through. Expert making the decision they want to move into. And would it be too odd here to maybe see an Aureal Greymane pick up right away? I could definitely see that. I mean, Expert has been playing with that a lot. The one problem is if they show an Aureal, it would be very likely that AD already, already plays it. But something that Immortal Pressure has to be a pick. And it's Greymane as expected. And instead of uh, focusing on early supports, it's instead material. So more of a traditional comp that is being used by them. The Sanctification as an option here for them. They're going away a bit from that uh, triple support. I don't really think that we're actually going to see it right now. Rip. It would be fun, though. It would be fun. I liked it the last time. Not it, today, it, man. It's, it's a Hero League nightmare, but seeing that in competitive it has definitely a, a bit of an appeal. Apparently, uh, the tournament life is more important than showing off three supports. I Who would have thunk? I can't understand that. I can understand that, too. Well, Dignitas on the left side here has their setup foundation for Murden. I'm actually excited for this, because as you mentioned, Fnatic banned out Murden last week, which means there might be something up the sleeve here of Dignitas that really features what Murden can pull off on this battleground. Yeah, uh, first of all, you can even spec a little bit more into the uh, hammer. They already see him go that on level one, just making that happen over and over again. He likes to be a bit more aggressive with that and snappy. But to me, it really feels as if the Muradin was a bit of a safety pick, where they said, whatever they do from here on out, we can still react. And since tanks were banned out this early, it also started to head a bit into a tank choke. So there were only a few available. With this, they have a Muradin, they have now Zeratul, and they have Malfurion. And there's a lot of comfort picks, a lot of heroes that also allow them to interrupt backlines and put a lot of pressure onto the opponent. Now, Ooh. you faced off against Zeratul with teammate in particular on this battleground very often. How scary and how effective can he be? here on BOE. It's a very common pick. Uh, generally, there's some sort of side lane soak going on during the first Immortal phases. People tend to prioritize experience more so than the actual Immortal itself in the early phase. This Sylve ban is somewhat suspect from Expert. Does lead me to think that they may be considering an Abathur pick later in the draft. Does synergize well with the Grey main that they already have. Let's see Ooh, if it comes here. Out. I'm so wondering also, the Sylph ban is definitely one of the things where I completely agree with you. That's a bit spec here. Either they are just worried that a snowball happens since they struggled in the early game quite a bit. Abathur could be a potential setup. I'm still waiting if there's a potential for them to go into uh, a Genji as well. We've seen Genji a few times. You are team fight oriented. If you really want to go into the dive heavy combo, that could be a thing for them. These two picks are basically going to tell us the story of what they're trying to do here. Yeah, the foundation will be finally revealed here. I mean, you obviously need another tank here. With the tanks being kind of choked out already, with a new Barak and Murden being picked up, as well as Tyrael, do you get another engage setup for Export, or do you just go with the solo Tyrael here and move in? We're going to have to find out what they want to move into. I think the Genji, what you're saying here, the full dive, similar to what we saw with the playing Ducks yesterday, can be a tasty pickup. However, Malfurion is a bit scary. The more I yeah. see Malfurion, Twilight Dreams, and Roots against a Genji, the more fearful I get for him. You have to be really careful. That's what we saw in Braxis. The Twilight Dreams is destroying him. Yeah. Oh, Alarak. Oh, okay. okay. This is something that I like to see. Alarak on this map, always a threat when you poke in to try to damage the enemy team's immortals. You might just get comboed into a boss stun. And you got nothing to do, you just die. And with them picking Brightwing, I think the chances that we are actually going to see a double support are also a lot higher with this. It would surprise me a bit if they go for Brightwing as the only support here on, against us. So Dignitas with the Malfurion already, I would think. We could theoretically see maybe the Aureal for ADRD. He loves to play that here if they go double support comps. 
But Alarag is it's definitely cool to see Alarag here. Yeah. That's gonna be a treat. I, I still wouldn't completely rule out the Abathur. I don't know this team's playstyle well enough to know, but it still seems like it could fit here. I like the decision to go with the Alarak as a more defensive option instead of committing to the full dive. If you commit full dive with a Tyrael Sanct and it gets countered by a VP on top of a Sanct into the root silence, everybody's dead. Yeah. And so this was a much safer option. You also have the Split Soak from the Brightwing, who's not that susceptible to Zeratul. They should be able to play defensively and get an experienced lead. Question being, will they double down on that with an Abathur? I don't think so, but it's an option because they have the Grey Main. Kel'Thas already taken. Okay, so a bit more AoE damage on the side of Dignitas. Mene getting his Fire Mage into play again, and they double down on the fire damage with Ragnaros for the solo lane. I That's really like the Ragnaros pickup for the Zeratul slash Ragnaros combo, especially yes. with KT coming in. Brightwing has a very difficult time dealing with that, which forces Tyrael to get in a spot where he has to use a Sanctification, maybe just to save a teammate. So suddenly this threat that is available from Dignitas, Expert has to seriously respect. This is one of the reasons why it would very much surprise me to see a Brightwing as a solo support in the setup now. I feel they need something that helps this setup to uh, survive. Tyrael, of course, has shields that he can throw into the fray here, but I don't think that's going to be enough to deal with what Dignitas has drafted against them. Yeah, with, this, with those two picks from Team Dignitas, they've uh, set up two very, very scary aspects. Their pre-10 is very scary with the Muradin, Kael'thas, Malfurion. That CC is going to lock down and kill anybody they catch. But then from 10 on, they also have a very scary team fight with all those ultimates as well. Okay, so Zarya has a bit of a compromise here. Having a lot of sustain now, they have shields on Tyrael, they have Zarya for extra shields, and then Brightwing towards that. So that helps them a bit, doesn't quite go into the double support for it, but still allows them to have three, two and a half tools that they can use to keep targets alive. If that's going to be enough, that's of course what we have to still find out here. I really actually overall more look at this. I like the Brightwing pick for the reason that you brought up, the Zeratul being in there, and she's able to sit in her own lane as well and soak too, but she also could put enough pressure on lane to make Zeratul peel out of that Immortal phase to allow Greymane to go in and get aggressive on the phase, and just Polymorph as Zeratul comes in and just phase shift in and they win the race right away. I actually really like this draft from Team Expert. I think once again, Dignitas has the much more aggressive and scary comp for the early to mid yeah. game. I think what we're going to have to see here from Expert is they need to get an advantage from that Brightwing Split Soak in order to get ahead in this game. Because otherwise, they're just going to get run over by those CC trains. It's going to yeah. be difficult. We'll see if they can pull it off here. Now, we always love hearing from you at home. And we actually have a tweet that you guys have sent our way using the hashtag HGC at Heroes Esports. Third guy's analysis is so good. <laughs> Blackheart, pay, Blackheart pays him doubloons. Jesus, man, is I almost laughed thing? on that one there. I guess so. How much money? You making the money? The Esports oh, dollars? Money. You rolling in the dough? I could take out a core by myself with these turn-ins. <laughs> Dang. Third guy making the bank up in here. Uh, it's been great having you around, man and I, I hope you uh, throw some of that money my way at some point. I wouldn't mind, you know, buying a new car or something so we can get around this L.A. traffic that Did you Caldor would have to drive chip. through. Yeah. Ghost yeah. chips. We're talking Blackheart already. And let's go, let's go all the way in into it. So we're getting ready for this match, game number four. If Dignitas wins here, they will move forward and face off against Team Liquid. Can they do it? Let's find out. We're going straight into, not Blackheart's Bay, almost said it there, Battlefield of Eternity. Game is on, and we are on Battlefield of Eternity, potentially the last map of our European playoff for the day. Dignitas to the left in the lead with a 2-1 in the best of five, playing with Main on Kalthas, Azalea on Zeratul, Bakery on Malfuria, and Snitch on Ragnaros, and JPL on Murden. To the far right in the red, Team Expert hoping to tie the series and go to a game number five, which did happen the last time. These two did face off. We went to a game number five. Alarak will be played by Blade. Nick will be on Greyman. ADRD on Zarya. Tyrael played by Bad Benny and Curson on the Brightwing. At this point, once again, we have a massive push towards the top lane by Expert, setting up against Ragnaros. Not getting uh, any kills here, but that was not the goal of the rotation. They are currently trying to put some extra damage onto the structures with Bad Benny rocking the bush down there, making sure that he sees anyone that rotates in to make sure his teammates don't get ganked upon. Dignitas hits a Stormbolt here on Bad Benny. The shield will come out instantly here from ADRD to keep him alive. While Alarak sits in that bottom lane, as you were mentioning, dealing with the KT. Poke Wars should be occurring as we're constantly going to see him zapping that KT. 
So for right now, we have our solo lane already in play down to the bottom of the map. It's currently Mena's job to hold the experience here. So he, uh, he's rotating with the Ragnaros now. Traditionally, it's the top lane that is solo. Expert was trying to shake that up a little bit and force the rotation out of Dignitas, keeping himself a bit safer. So the uh, normal bot lane, the, the normal solo lane has now been established at the bottom of the map. And we are seeing at the top our four men colliding. I actually like that move a lot from Dignitas, where they put four in the top in case there was that Zarya cheese coming in to kill down a turret. Four members can handle it, but KT himself, by dropping a Living Bomb or even a Flame Strike, will force the opponents to spread out and stop getting DPS on that turret. So a cool way to, for them to handle the possibility of Zarya coming in setting up. Yeah, also at this point when we're looking at Muradin, we've been seeing it last time that JPL played the hero, went into the perfect storm as the level 1 talent, attempting to get some more stacks for bursty damage. And that is of course something that Expert is going to have to try and deal with. It's one of the downsides that we have with that right wing pick, and this is exactly the reason why Zarya is trying to mitigate that problem with a potential shield. I do wonder if we're going to see the full Korean build here from Muradin, where he goes all three Stormbolt Talons of 1, 4, and 7 to help out with burning down the Immortal, but also to be very effective in helping out in the damage. We have seen him go into sustained talents after Storm, at least in the previous games that he played here. But in the past, that definitely has been a pretty big thing to try and get the extra damage in. One of the problems that you have with it is that it's something that just starts to really gain momentum later on. The early game, you can't really rely upon it, so that makes it sometimes a bit tricky. But for now, the first Immortal teams are fighting over, just about to hit the level 4 talent. JPL already going in for Zarya, the lockdown. No shields, AD already barely getting out, helping Nick out for a moment, but that could have been a kill against Zarya. The shields really helping out overall there. For Expert as ADR lives, Dignitas will rotate to the bottom. Go ahead and start defending the mortal once again. As mentioned by Kotlin, we're going to late for that level four. Level four is so important here in the early game before we start moving into your engagements. And Dignitas will shark around for another opportunity to get the setup, the CC again. And now we have Muradin indeed going for the Stormbolts here. So catering towards the map, getting the Sledgehammer on level four. Now keep in mind, it's not only additional damage against the Immortal, but also on top of that, you take ammo from structures, which can be important if you're starting to push towards keeps and forts. It's a lot of uh, shots, right? It's four. four. Yeah, exactly. dang. Four shots it's to get quite taken a bit. out. Ouch. That is a lot of shots there. And we'll see if they can pull that off as JPL is defending. Blade moves in for aggressive play, and he might get caught out. No, able to use telekinesis to retreat. But once again, the root on the ground. Nick is jumping into the back line, or at least trying to. Looking bad for him, though. Greymane dead. JPL jumps out. Close call for him, but he survives. Snitch, Zalia, and Bakery all low, but still able to posture around a bit more as they're attempting to defend against Expert. Going for the Immortal, another push. A oh, blade barely getting away. Cursing coming in there at the last couple of seconds for the tick of health. Peekaboo also giving them an idea of where Zeratul was at, which forced him to retreat. So Zalia, although full on health, not able to go in for the engage. Another Stormbolt connecting once again onto Brightwing. Yeah, Meridian is just chunking those out. Him getting the stacking going is, of course, super important for them. And if he can continue to do that, he's going to be stronger and stronger towards the later stages of the game. Oh, ADRD getting hit, but we'll get the energy in exchange there from the CC coming his way. Poking on the Immortal when he can. They're actually winning this Immortal race so far here as Greymane and uh, Zarya can be quite effective. Yeah, with Greymane in particular, they have just simply better tools to pressure the Immortal itself. It's one of the reasons why Dignitas is currently hesitant to go for the opponent's Immortal. They just know they cannot win the race yet. It's something that they are waiting for a bit later. The entire comp is really hoping for good team fights. And now the halftime show has started, so the Immortals start to reset here, and immediately Bakerina's boys are starting to take position around their own Immortal, trying to continue the trend. Expert keeping up with the poke here. Brywing working her best here to heal when she can, but also to drop down that pixie dust to make sure no one gets locked in while ADRD is in a safe zone. He can focus on just providing shields when he needs to. Still looking good for Expert, going for that first Immortal here. Very good indeed. Dignitas not getting any damage in themselves. They're still looking for kills. Bad Benny, they were hoping to catch him, but they can't make it work. Gonna have a couple taps here on the top right. Expert can move back into the fight. Blade himself even tapping as well. 
And with this Immortal getting down to low health consistently, Dignitas, as you mentioned, is looking for these fights. Can they get it? The scouting drone is actually very helpful and making sure they can scout which angle Expert is coming in from. Now, there is an advantage. Level 7 has been hit here for Dignitas, so they can play a little bit more aggressive while Expert needs to find a way to soak up. Also, Dignitas with the level 7 talent going for Muradin's Iron Forge Momentum. Cooldown reduction for the Storm Bolts even. They're jumping in once again as Nick is finding himself in trouble. Greyman dying again, but the counter kill against Mena as he goes down. It's a one for one. Immortal still about to fall, but they're hoping for a second kill against Blade on Alarak. They're working on it. Remember that Storm Bolt being out for JPL. Bad Benny brings us the damage, and the first Immortal will be awarded to Team Experts. They get another kill against Tyrael, so we have three kills against one. And a pretty decent lead in experience, a bit more than half a level. Dignitas is happy to just rely on that for now, but of course, Expert. So I have a really good shot at just making sure they will at least catch up, it not even overtake Dignitas in experience. Losing out on the Immortal is uh, unfortunate, but Dignitas with his Ragnaros will defend it pretty well here. Team Expert's actually gonna commit to pushing in the bottom lane here, looking for the turrets, get the experience tied up as much as they can here, as they're almost a full level behind. And JPL sitting in that front line is scary enough to where they're not doing too much. Now Zelia comes in for a gank, he's looking for Curson. Yeah, they're jumping in a little bit deep here for JPL. APL actually, they were trying to zone so that the Immortal would not be able to do too much here. This is one of the ideas that they had, just driving a wedge between the opponent's team and the Immortal so that you don't face the entire power of your opponent pulling down on or pushing down onto the fort itself. So that was a pretty smart move, but also a bit risky on Murden with the engage here. And oh, Laragnaros goes down a bit too far out. That is bad news for Dignitas. Can they maybe get the counter kill against Bad Benny? Doesn't look like it. Bakery a bit far out here, but Bad Benny jumps in again. Wow, they're looking for Bakery. And look how Bakery actually hugged that turret there. When the Telekinesis came out, he didn't get pulled into the fight. Solid use of structures by Bakery to survive there. Now, Dignitas, although they lose Ragnaros, they are still in a pretty great spot. They're about to hit level 10 here. They can move towards the mercenary camps. And if they play their card rights, they should be in a solid spot to where they will have their heroics over their opponents going into the Immortal phase. Important was really the soak on the side of Zeratul, getting a bit more soak in and the experience for the earlier level 10. Now we have a camp taken already. Both of the teams are focusing on those a bit more. The level 10 abilities are ready. An expert is not really finding themselves in a horrible spot here. They reach 10 later, but it's still way in time to make sure they have it for the next Immortal phase. We're seeing for now also no crazy ults coming out of Dignitas. But there's of course now combo potential with the Void Prison, Sulfura Smash as the follow-up, and more AoE damage coming in on the side of Kalthas. Celia coming in here looking for that fight before 10 does hit. They go straight in and they pick up Tyrael. Here's a Void Prison on Alarak. And they go straight in again, trying to drop their combo. They get the kill against Alarak as Tyrael is already dead. A sweet double kill as we have the Immortal coming online in another three seconds. Dignitas with camps on the map, one pushing the bot lane, Zeratul joining it, another one to the top. And now they can converge onto the Immortal itself. Yes, this is a big moment for them. Pushing in the bottom with Zelia and the Merc Camp, as you mentioned, Merc Camp in the top. They get to the halftime show. Everything goes right here for Dignitas. They get that level 10 and they push their advantage to get two kills and to really control the map. They have all that burst damage now, and this is really what they're hoping for. Get a kill with a burst damage and take it from there. There's still pressure at the top lane. Expert is now back with five on the map, and they are starting to apply some pressure themselves, but the top lane is a definitely an issue, and Ragnaros is making this even worse by moving up top to take the wave down before joining up with the rest of the team. Immortals being burned off, as uh, you're mentioning here by both of our teams, but KT and uh, Zeratul have a very strong lead due to the early play of Dignitas, and finally it will be done here. The Immortal with about half a health of shield. Bad Benny is on the left side here as JPL looking to maybe go for an engage, but while the teammates are setting up in the bottom, he needs to show up and help his team. And JPL is still trying to stack here. <laughs> Gets a quick spray out as well. I'm a bit disappointed going for the standard one. I expected a bit more creativity to come out of the friendship. Dude, loadouts are so hard, man. Like, I think the first day, if you actually go through and set everything up, it takes you like two and a half hours to set up every loadout if you actually look through the customizations. It's difficult, man. Yeah. JPL, we need a hammer and a spray for him. Just dropping the hammer here on the Muradin. And they are actually doing exactly that. A hammer comes out, locks down Alarak for a moment. 
We have the Immortal pushing through the fort as if it's nothing and heading straight for the keep here. Already bereft of its shields, but hit points are still high and the 13 talents soon will be dropping for Dignitas with a very solid lead and experience. Yeah, so far Expert has a really good defense, so Dignitas isn't going to do too anything worrisome in terms of aggression. They in fact put Zeratul in that top lane to keep up the pressure and they can maybe move into a fort. Kirsten is going to go ahead and use a phase shift and drop into the fight. He's looking for that Zeratul. With him not being on the field, we're going to see uh, a pause, and then we're going to have Zeratul continue to push in that top lane. So overall, so far, it's looking pretty solid for Dignitas as they get their lead, but Expert, as we've seen, if they can get into a spot with the Immortal Race, they can poke and really whittle their opponent down. Yeah, there's also one concern, though, for Expert at this point. JPL is doing a fantastic job on stacking damage, and thanks to the Sledgehammer talent on level 4, also feeding off it, it's not only great to simply take down the Immortal itself, it's amazing against structures. And this is really one of the biggest concerns currently, since if that game just continues to get prolonged and he continues stacking, the damage output against structures becomes quite significant. And if you can take the keeps down and put your opponent in a spot where it's very tricky for them to go for the Immortal in the middle, but still have the side lanes protected when catapults push in, that can decide over victory or loss. So. There's a lot of pressure on Expert. They can still break out, but yeah. they have to make that play soon. Dignitas is looking to wear down their opponent for sure, especially with the Merc Camps. They've been grabbing those every time they can before the Immortal phase, and that compounds the idea you were just talking about. Let's go ahead and go back into the game here as we're going into BOE. We're about halfway through, and we're getting ready for our third Immortal phase when we have... Dignitas, pretty far ahead. Two levels and one talent. Yeah, the talent is the important part here too, since especially with Malfurion, the Ice Block alone helps you. We also have on uh, Muradin, still the Healing Static. He also has the Iron Forge Momentum for cooldown reduction. He can't really rely on the second explosion because of his level 4 talent that he switched to, com to just accommodate the map more. But they're going in. They want to force the fight on 13. They are trying to make that happen. And Ragnaros in the back with the Molten Core. Absolutely so fantastic. So for us and their damage, we have Kel'thas with so much that he can contribute to this fight. Even the Sanctification cannot keep Raymond alive. And this could be the beginning of the end in a team fight. But maybe... Ah, Zelia gets out. Mane was low on health as well, but with the help of Bakery, he was able to survive. Expert still has four members up that are actually pretty good in fights. Zarya and Blade in particular moving in for the aggression. Zelia gets low on health, and they're not able to turn around this fight. Expert holds true. Expert actually played this quite nicely, and it came all down to the sanctification. It felt a bit as if Greymane could have maybe even survived longer too if he just moved into it, but everyone else was saved, so... That was a good kill for Dignitas, but this could have been way, way worse for Expert than it uh, turned out to be. They mitigated the pressure yeah. with a talent behind due to the sanctification, and that's kudos to Bad Benny, man. That guy continues to deliver on whatever warrior he needs to be on. It was a really impressive move there. They could have lost two, three heroes easily. They ended up with losing one, but he's back in time for the Immortal. This is still absolutely okay for them. But camps have been taken. The 13 talent should come for Expert, but it's a bit of free damage that Dignitas can push onto the Immortal. And they soon are going to have their own cooldowns back, especially, of course, Malfurion with his Twilight Dream in another seven seconds. JPL is going to deal with the Polymorph soon here. Cursed Bullet sadly does miss. Bad Benny, though, has a rotation on the left side. Avatar will be popped for JPL so he can survive. And this fight looks pretty much done here. JPL missing the Storm Bolt will be able to hop away while Zelia, look at him, he's in the top lane just pushing. That was a tricky fight also for Expert. They burned a lot of cooldowns. Thankfully for them, it was short cooldowns. Dignitas only burned one, but that was of course the Muradin avatar. And that's a bit of an issue. But Blade moving now down, opens up that window towards the Immortal for Dignitas and they are trying to use it. They are working on the window when they can here. The Immortal is getting low, a little less than three quarters of health. Now, Alaric dealt with the pressure in the bottom, but KT clears out the entire wave in the top, and a fort is getting low, which is going to put Dingtoss close to that level 16. Their defense is pretty solid. They have Muradin, they have uh, Malfurion. If Malfurion hits a random route, you have a Sulfur Smash that can come out. Yeah, I also really like how they are. Oh, wait a second. That could be a kill. Oh, nice Void Prison to save them. The follow-up is there, but no kill happening just yet. Oh, the silence and Greymane falls after all. Not only him, it's Brightwing can just not deal with all that damage output that we see here. And Dignitas goes in once. A fantastic performance by them again. It was it was actually an engage against Zeratul, and Zelia turns it around, and it results in a quad kill. 
That was Sulfur Smash into a Twilight Dream and a Living Bomb that put out all that damage. Brightwing frantically trying to keep members alive, couldn't even blink kill, and that was yeah. four members eliminated. Such a cool play here. Really well done from Zelia in particular. After he was under so much pressure, still able to set that up as Expert Chase. Did you see him? He dropped the Void Prison. Yeah. Knew he was done. He just mounted up right next to it with the Tyrael next to him and also canceled the ult in the middle of the mount animation. That's how confident he was in that kill. It was super cool. And I was just about to compliment them also for how mobile they are on the map. Always pushing into these lanes and starting to pressure forts and keeps to keep Expert on their toes and just allow these advantageous situations where Expert has to split someone off. Look at this, man. They didn't finish the Immortal because they wanted everyone to go back, top off their health and their mana, and just get ready for a push all together. Dignitas is in full control of their macro. They see the overall game plan. Yeah, they have exactly what they want now. They have an Immortal pushing through the top lane. The uh, fort is already very low. Zeratul is pressuring the bot lane a bit. The rest of the team is actually starting to make a rotation there too. If they get Tyrael now, if they find him, that will be the disaster for Expert. But the keep is something they just simply cannot, they, they, they can't defend. There. There's, there's absolutely no way. You have to sacrifice that one. That Benny will look a little bit scary here, uh, but he's just okay. a fly on the wall. He's gonna drop the sink. Uh, what? Well, wow. okay. okay, I'm not quite on the level what exactly that was since he had no chance of actually doing anything there. It's a bait. He used a sink so the team expert will maybe get a fight if they can force the opponent <laughs> to be too confident and Mayday gets killed. High level plays here from Bad Benny with the sink being used and KT gets picked off. What? AD already survives that? He didn't have any hit points left. That hit point bar was completely black. Greymane goes down though. Yeah, they're trying to finally drop Tyrael. So Bad Benny with a weird sanctification, but a great kill against Mana right after that. Now Blade is in trouble. AD Artie is also a bit far out here, but both of them are able to survive. I have to admit that Expert's ability to just always shift around is pretty fantastic here, but it still doesn't save their uh, keep at the top, and uh, it looks like Dignitas wants to take the core. They are looking for the core here. Might be a difficult task here with ADRD on that Zarya on the right side. Blade as well gets a solid silence. JPL on the front. That Immortal still pushing in. It's got half a health bar. Core starting to fall. 60% down at 50%. Nick jumps in. He will be on Snitch. Bakery as well in trouble, but this Immortal is nice and healthy. That is going to be a 3-1 victory for Dignitas, and they'll move on the playoffs tomorrow. They face off against Team Liquid. Dignitas takes it. They go to face Team Liquid, as he said. Great performance on the last map. Map choice of the opponent, map choice of Team Expert, but Dignitas just showing no weakness here. Great coordination, and Zelia, fantastic setups for the rest of the team. Zelia being impressive, but Dignitas overall. Cawthon, what do you think? A couple great plays from Dignitas that game. Uh, one of the ones that I want to highlight is they built up a small lead pre-10. It was only half a level, but how they capitalized on that set the pace for the rest of the game. Uh, right before the Immortal phase came up at 9 minutes, when they were still 10 and the other team was just about to hit 10, they forced really hard, got one pick, and then immediately got another with uh, their soft Wombo. Well, I'm hearing that you also have a replay for us. We're going to check out some of the plays that happened during that matchup, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So this is a fantastic play here because it's not something that was pre-planned out. You see Zalia nearly get picked off by this combo. He uses the VP here to escape, but off of this defensive VP, they execute with very little time to set up the perfect Wombo, which turns it completely into their favor. The fact that they were able to do it, even though Zalia was in a semi-panic situation, setting up a defensive VP just to save himself, and they were still able to turn it into such an offensive play within a matter of like two seconds, that was fantastic play. It's also, again, just a key indicator of how strong JPL is on the murder, and he just jumped right in, completely divided the entire team here. Just no fear on Muradin. In the middle of things, throwing out Storm Balls, getting the damage in, zoning for the rest, and just chasing them, getting kill after kill. They played fantastic. Well, we have Bakery on the phone to talk about the series. Bakery, congratulations on your victory. You guys take down Expert 3-1. to one. How does it feel? Yeah, it, it feels good. I mean, I guess Bad Bunny probably mixed up his words yesterday. Uh, he probably <laughs> meant Dignitas 3 if they play well. Um... But no, seriously, I, I just want to take this opportunity to give a shout out to Expert. I think over this split, you can see they're actually, they've been a really strong team. They've actually really pushed the top three to always stay focused. I think that's a really good thing for the scene.
And I also, I love Fast Talk. So shout out to Bad Benny as well. Ah, oh, he's such a nice guy there, Bakery, calling out the expert in this really cool series. It was fun to watch you guys today. You guys were really on fire. I want to talk about that last second replay we were just talking about where we had Zelly hit that Void Prison the last second, and you guys instantly turned that around. How do you even get that coordinated? So th that's kind of like a, a combo is that we look for VP. Uh, Zelly is calling, like, I'm cool, I'm cool, help me. And then, like, after half a second of calling that, he's like, we can turn, like, instantly. Even though he's still silenced or whatever, he's calling, like, we can turn. So the whole team, like, wasn't really focused on, oh, damn, he's in trouble. It, it, like, as soon as he started calling that, we were like, oh, okay, this is our fight. Like, we can take this. Freaking awesome, man. I'm sending you over to Caldor again. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Well, first of all, congratulations. You guys played fantastic today. It was really amazing to see the coordination there. I wanted to know how you guys feel about your match tomorrow against Team Liquid. It's, of course, the big one. The winner goes to Sweden. How do you guys feel about the match? And, uh, yeah, what do you expect from the series? So Team Liquid obviously have been, like, a top three team in Europe for over a year now. Um, and they've always been impressive. I think for us, we were definitely more focused on the Expert series because we thought that was the dangerous one. That was the wild card. Uh, so right now we're going to go away. We're going to look at a lot of Team Liquid's drafts. And I think as long as we're, as long as we're comfortable and as long as we know what we're playing, uh, then I think... Don't say 3-0. Don't say 3-0. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll be a close series for sure. Okay, awesome. I'm really, I'm really hoping for a cool series tomorrow there. That matches what everybody has been waiting for. It should be fantastic. Cawthon, any questions for Bakery? Bakery, my old friend. Uh, <laughs> I'm happy to see you guys go through. I was rooting for you. You know we want a chance to, to play again. Get a <laughs> yeah. chance to maybe maybe, uh, maybe get you back for some of those horrible, horrible defeats we've played in the past. <laughs> but I got to say that was some great play. Considering you guys were more scared of expert, self-stated, than of Team Liquid, and yet you dominated the majority of all four games. Even the game you dropped, you were in control of that for 90% plus of the game. You've got to be feeling super confident going into tomorrow after just dismantling the team you stated you were afraid of, right? Well, I think we were afraid of Expert because we didn't know what they could do. Whereas Liquid, obviously, we've played a lot of series against them now. Uh, they've been one of our main contenders for over a year, as I said. So we're not we're not confident, we're not comfortable, but we're, we're calm. Like, we know that we have the skills and we have the the means to win and we just need to make sure that we play as well as we did today all right so you're feeling that the threat of the unknown was scarier to you guys at knocking you out of the playoffs than just going up against someone and letting your mechanics and team play and rotations decide the game yeah for sure well, Bakery, congratulations again today on your victory. It's always awesome to see you play, and always great to hear from you. Before we let you go, any shout-outs to the people at home? And also, what should we expect for tomorrow? So shout-outs to, uh, obviously, uh, Team Dignitas and, of course, my team. Uh, they're great. Shout-out to all our sponsors. Uh, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Twitter, which is at Bakery Heroes. And lastly, a shout-out to all the fans uh, who are cheering us on today. It really does mean a lot. I think tomorrow you can expect to see a really